Good evening, everyone. Um, it's a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. We're going to do a little reading today, some more from a nest for Celeste. Um, as I told you before, I got my new couch today, which was my grandmother's couch. It's a beautiful dark blue. I'm very happy and I hope you're in a good mood today as well. <sighs> All right, let's sit back, relax, and we'll listen to a few chapters from A Nest for Celeste, written and illustrated by Henry Cole. Chapter three, Mr. Audubon. Celeste sat in the shadows beneath the sideboard, listening and watching. She was worried about being seen, even a glimpse. Once, she had clumsily let her tail protrude from the shadows, and the lady had screamed and dropped a dish. She wouldn't let that happen again. And if you look at our photo, our little drawing here, our illustration, you see she's hiding ever so quietly behind what looks like maybe the leg of a table or a chair. Okay. She watched for the cat a silent mass of gray fur that roamed the dining room. She saw five sets of shoes around the dining room table. This meant that there were guests dining. Two pairs belonged to the ladies of the house. She had seen them before and knew them well. remembering their silk shoes beneath the rustling petticoats and skirts. Another pair of shoes at the head of the table belonged to the master of the house. Celeste had seen him before too. He had a fuzzy set of graying whiskers on each cheek and a red nose. Celeste noticed a napkin fall as he scooted his chair back and stood up. And now, Mr. Audubon, he said, I formally welcome you and your young assistant to Oakley Plantation and wish you a happy stay here. There was a clinking of glasses. Merci, ah, uh, thank you, Monsieur Piri, boomed another voice. So he was just talking in French, right? Merci means thank you in French, and monsieur means mister, so Mr. Piri. Both Joseph and I are so very grateful for your hospitality. Your good wife, Madame Piri, is a most charming hostess, and your daughter, Miss Eliza, is a delight. I look forward to instructing her in the art of dancing of drawing and of painting. She looks to be someone mm, light on her toes. And she is now at the age to have dancing with many beaux, yes? Beau means boys. So he's saying she's going to dance with some, some boys at a party maybe. Outgrown the dolls, yes? I have the latest gavottes and cotillions from Paris for her to learn. Those are types of dances. I'm pretty sure based off the context clues, since they're talking about dancing and those are words I don't know. Excellent Audubon, said Mr. Peary. That sounds fine, mighty fine. I can't have my daughter right on the verge of being courted by every buck in the parish and not knowing the proper way to dance. That Mr. Bradford over at Bayou Sarah has taken on a fancy teacher for his daughters, and I won't give Liza anything else. I'll leave you in charge of the drawing and the dance steps. Thank you, monsieur. And I understand that you'll be studying the birds around here and painting their pictures. Their portraits, monsieur. Yes, I will be collecting specimens of as many different species as I possibly can when not instructing Miss Eliza here. It is my intent to paint the portraits of every single species of bird in North America and to paint the birds in their natural surroundings. 
and as lifelike as possible. Quite an undertaking. Yes, it is indeed. And this evening, I have brought along an example of what I am trying to achieve. He held up a large sheet of paper. Voila, a canvas back duck. Celeste could see a painting of a beautiful bird. Very nice, very nice indeed, Autobahn, said Mr. Peary. It's quite large, commented Mrs. Peary. Yes, it is. It is life size. I have much to do. It may take many, many months. My assistant here, Monsieur Joseph, is but a lad, but is quite capable as an artist himself. He will be helping me with the background, perhaps? Yes, Joseph? Celeste heard another voice, younger and softer. Still keeping to the shadows, she very carefully peeked up at the table. Yes, sir, the boy answered. He looked much younger than the other men. His hair was the color of a chestnut. That's like a brown, right? Chestnuts are normally brown. And his face was smooth. His eyes were wide and pale blue. Celeste noticed something melancholy in them. Now melancholy, that's a tough word, and it's sometimes hard to tell based off those context clues, right? Celeste noticed something melancholy in them. So something's in his eyes. Melancholy, a synonym for that would actually be feeling sad. So Celeste can see that in Joseph's eyes, he's feeling a little sad, right? He might be a little saddened by something, maybe something in the past, who knows? We'll have to keep reading to find out. Parents alive, son? Mr. Perry asked. Yes, sir, in Cincinnati, sir, Joseph replied. Cincinnati, that's quite a ways from here, several weeks journey. You're a long way from home, young fella. And here's a picture of Joseph for us, so we can maybe visualize him in our heads, right? He's got dark chestnut hair, okay? A bit of sadness in his eyes. Maybe his, he's smiling, I can't tell. Maybe he looks a little sad, a little bit of a frown. Celeste watched Joseph as he ate. That explains the lost look on his face, she thought. He's a long way from home. And lonely, too. Monsieur Joseph has been a student of mine, Autobahn explained. The training and experience he receives as my assistant is invaluable. His mama and papa see that he has talent. He may at some point be quite capable at the botanicals. So that means plants, right? Botanic, botany means plant, the study of plants. Botanicals is different kinds of plants. So they're talking maybe about drawing plants, right? Botanicals, eh? That's plants and such, am I right? Yes, sir, said Joseph. Mr. Peary, I noticed that you have several magnificent magnolia trees in your yard in full bloom. I've never seen such beautiful trees and some outstanding specimens of tulip poplar as well. Perhaps we can use those in our paintings? Mr. Peary looked pleased. That'd be fine, son, just fine, he said. The conversation turned to the weather, to the crops and to horses as Celeste watched carefully for crumbs dropping to the carpet. Eventually, the candles and oil lamps were snuffed out for the evening. The dining room was dark and silent. Celeste prepared to venture out from beneath the sideboard to gather the remains of the meal. Chapter four, a sudden departure. Hmm, I wonder who's going to be departing? Who's leaving us? Celeste felt a shove as Ileana and Trixie suddenly appeared behind her. Where have you been? Ileana whispered. We're practically starving and you're here dawdling. I tell you, Trixie, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. She sniffed the air. Hmm, something
thing smells good. Her nose told her that with guests in the house, the spoils under the table were improving. She was anxious to take advantage of things and sample every morsel. She turned to Celeste. You wait here, she said. I don't want you getting all the good pieces first. Keep an eye out for the cat. Come along, Trix. The two shadows paused beneath the sideboard. Their noses waved back and forth as they studied the field of carpet and the forest of table and chair legs. They listened. Now, these aren't, is this a real forest, right? Or, or field of carpet? This is a metaphor, right? They're describing tables and chairs as a forest because why do you think? Why do you think they would describe it as a forest in the eyes of a rat or a mouse? Comment below if you might have an idea of why they used a metaphor like this, okay? Except for the ticking of the hallway clock, the only thing they heard was the galloping of their own heartbeats. Trixie's nose sniffed the air. That's pie crust, she whispered. Yes, indeed it is, replied Ileana. And is that spoon bread? Last one there is a rotten egg. Don't make me drool. And the two rats scampered out from under the sideboard and carefully hugging the wall, following their noses to the broken piece of fallen pie crust. No one saw the cat seated on the needlepoint cushion of a dining room chair as it suddenly stopped licking between its two two back toes. It peered into the shadows, pupils darkening, eyes as wide as those of an owl on a moonless night, watching the two shapes scurrying. And there we see the cat, right? She's looking for those mice. scurrying along the baseboard. It raised its rear haunches slightly, careful to use only the necessary muscles with only barely detectable movement. No blinking of the eyes or flicking of the ears, no twitch of the tail. The shadows made a sharp turn away from the wall and straight to the table. The cat grinned its back feet shifted ever so slightly, tensed and ready to pounce. Ileana, whose favorite thing was day-old pie crust, suddenly stopped. Wait, she sniffed again. That's pie crust and something else. A moment too late. There was a ripping sound of claws on carpet as two rats split paths, Trixie racing hysterically toward the front screen door. And you have, there's the cat, right? He's chasing our rats. Oh my goodness. And Ileana attempting to rapidly circle back to the safety under the sideboard. But in an instant, the cat predicted Ileana's turn and cut her off. And there came a terrible, frantic, high-pitched squeak for help, then a sound like wet fingers on a candle flame. Frozen under the sideboard, Celeste squeaked in horror. Ileana! The cat ignored Celeste's piteous cry. Trixie, in a frenzy, scrambled and wiggled through a crack under the screen door and ran out into the dark evening. Except for the ticking of the hallway clock, the dining room was quiet again. Though Celeste's head echoed with the sound of Ileana's death cry, she was alone. I feel kind of bad for Ileana, but she was also very mean to Celeste. I'm very mixed about how I feel, but there's our dear friend Celeste, right, hiding behind the sideboard. That's like a buffet table we put in our dining room sometimes, and 
Here's our cat, right? Okay, we're up to chapter five. We're going to stop here tonight, all right? But it's been really fun to read. Unfortunately, one of, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you feel, uh, our rat character, Ileana, was murdered by a cat while she was trying to steal some pie crust. And Trixie escaped. And Celeste is just sitting and hiding underneath a sideboard in the dining room. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. You'll have to think about it. Let me know if you have any predictions. Feel free to comment below, okay? All right, that's all for tonight. Have a lovely rest of your evening, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Bye.